Hi, folks. Today I'm going to be talking a bit about uh, some things that have been seen recently in stereo head images. Uh, some people have noticed that there appear to be rings coming from the sun in uh, some images from July 19th. And uh, so we're going to take a look at that. First thing, we're going to open up the raw data from this image. You can see that here, July 19th, 2009 And uh, if you're not familiar with the raw data, these are 32 bit FITS files. So they have much more dynamic range than a normal 8-bit monitor can display. Normally, the images you see online, uh, like the JPEGs you can download from the stereo website, are 8-bit images. So they have to do a lot of processing to create those 8-bit images because there's a lot more dynamic range than you can stuff into an 8-bit image. And if you try to display the, the image on an 8-bit monitor like this, you first open it up, all you see is black because the image data is all closer to the bottom in the histogram. And so on an 8-bit monitor that can't distinguish those values, it all looks black. So the first thing you want to do is uh, what we call an auto clip in uh, Pixin Sight, and that will automatically set the maximum values on the histogram to the maximum pixel values in the image, and the bottom of the histogram will be clipped to the darkest pixels in the image. So if we do that here, we see the image, and we see what look like lobes coming from the sun. Now, I should also point out right away that uh, if it, this image looks upside down, that's because it is. Um, when PixInsight opens up these images from stereo, it uh, opens them up inverted. I don't know why, but it does. It's just how it happens. But um, in any case, you see this gradient, which is the sort of stepwise gradient. And if, you, uh, if you've had any experience working with the, the raw data from stereo, you might recognize this because it looks like this anytime. Uh, you try to open the images in a program that can't handle the full bit depth of the image uh, and converts it to a lower bit depth image. You get these stepwise gradients in the solar glare. That's what this is, solar glare, uh, glare from the sun in the image. So if we open up a normal image, uh, normal full 32-bit image, uh, this one was taken just a little while before. We do an auto clip. We see that the glare is in a much smoother gradient. Now, once you get over here, it starts to become sort of uh, stairwise again, uh, these individual steps of brightness. Because again, we, we, we're working with a monitor here that can't display the full 32 bit uh, uh, dynamic range. And so it ends up approximating it. And if I save this as an 8 bit image right now, this is all you would see. You would see that, uh, uh, that blocky gradient. And uh, that's because there's more bit depth here then can be contained in an 8-bit image. So if I were to stretch it some more, you could see that gradient go away. Now it's nice and smooth. But uh, let's uh, undo that for a second because we're going to do something else here. So you may be wondering why uh, it looks like rings in the stereo images available online, in the JPEGs online. Well, that's because they've calibrated it against uh, to remove the solar glare against images that were previously taken and those images are of course full 32-bit images but they're they're calibrating this image which has a large portion of it only encoded in 16 bits and how do i know it's only encoded in 16 bits well if we take this image and we don't do anything to it we just save it straight away as a 16-bit image and then we do the same thing again we do this auto clip There you go, there's the same thing. The exact same problem with the, the solar glare. It's this uh, blocky stepwise um, uh, gradient, which is not uh, smooth at all. So the question is, why do they look like rings in the images available online? Well, if we take this normal image and we create our own calibration frame from it, we're going to use uh, PixInsight's dynamic background subtraction to do a quick and dirty calibration. Uh, this is designed to eliminate gradients from the image. In this case, the gradient happens to be from solar glare. So now it's going to model that and create a calibration image. And that will allow us to subtract most of the glare from these images. So I'm going to apply this to all the images except the calibration image itself. And then we're going to stretch the histogram again. This time we're going to do it manually. 
Now, of course, this process is automated by the stereo team, but the, the principle is exactly the same. I'm trying to bring out what's left in the image so that it can be properly displayed in an 8-bit image. Okay, so our dynamic background subtraction doesn't perfectly eliminate the solar glare, but it does get rid of a lot of it and allows us to see much dimmer parts of the image, all these nice stars and everything. Well, if we try to do that to the images that we've uh, subtracted over here, these images that have 16-bit data, and we try to do the same thing, and we try to stretch them so that the peak of the histogram is down here uh, while bringing out the same sorts of features, we run into a little bit of a, of a problem. There you go. There's your, there's your rings in the image. So that's what that is. That is uh, just the result of calibrating the image, uh, this image that has a large portion of it only encoded in 16-bit using a calibration image that was made from a 32-bit image. So if we do the same, I can make any, any image look like that. So we saved this normal looking image as a 16-bit image. We've subtracted our calibration image. Now we do uh, the same, same modification to it and we'll get the same rings. There we go, rings once again rings from the sun. I can do that to any image simply by saving a 16-bit. So what's happened here is that a portion of the image, a large portion of the image, is only encoded in 16 bits. Uh, these aren't actual rings in space. They're not actual features of anything but uh, some data loss. And so if we look at the uh, stereo meeting team meeting minutes from the week, uh, we see that on July 19th, DSS-15, that's one of the deep space network antennas that they use to download the high quality data here uh, from the stereo spacecraft had a problem. Uh, there was a turbo decoder lock. Uh, the turbo decoder lock was intermittent because they had a problem with the uh, elevation encoder. Uh, any, tel any motorized telescope has encoders to tell it uh, where it's pointed and apparently they had a problem with the elevation encoder that day and it resulted in the loss of a lot of data. Normally, uh, they, sometimes they do experience some, some data loss. Normally, it's, it's only small portions you know, of an image. And so if we look, for instance, on the previous day, they lost 16 frames of data. Well, they lost a lot more data uh, this day due to a problem with their elevation encoder, which caused an, a signal to be, the signal to be intermittent for about four and a half hours. So unfortunately, uh, what we're left with is an image that has uh, only 16-bit encoding on a large portion of it. And when you try to calibrate that using a 32-bit image, you end up getting rings. But it's it's just an anomaly of the processing. It's not an actual anomaly in space. Hope that uh, clears things up for you. Have a nice day.